My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big ROAS man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get a $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. You are listening to the new Mutual Audio Network. Welcome home. The following audio drama is rated restricted for anyone listening under the age of 17. Frequent or prolonged examples of adult situations, violence, or coarse language may apply. May 25th, 2005. You are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. I should have started this show on time, but uh, I was just a little bit distracted looking at this amazing website called NoseWaterTokyo.com. Man, that's NoseWaterTokyo.com. Who would have thought it, boy? And I, I just can't help but say it often enough, NoseWaterTokyo.com. The, the words just roll off the tongue. And I was thinking if uh, I had some really cool stuff that I wanted to get from Japan, the really cool little trinkets and... and uh, and toys and stationery and any and really, really, really cool, sweet, ultra, ultra spiffy uh, Japanese gifts that I'd like to give to friends of mine, I'd, I'd go over to NoseWaterTokyo.com. Anyway, welcome to Technical Difficulties. I'm your host, Kyan Chris Conroy, and uh, welcome to the newest episode. I'm glad you're there. I'm, thanks for all the podcast votes, uh, podcast alley votes I've been getting, and uh, the show's slowly climbing its way up the ratings chart. Thanks once again. And uh, I got a full show. No John Henry this week, I'm afraid. Sorry. We were going to do another Zoo Patrol, but hey, he'll be back, and we'll be getting to do more stuff like that. Anyway, let's go right into the show, shall we? But first, I'd like to tell you about an exciting piece of information. My website can now be found, my blog, and all this podcast stuff can now be found at techdiff.com. That's right, I'm the proud owner of a domain name, techdiff.com. Tell your friends. Good afternoon, and welcome to Technical Difficulties Playhouse. The Tech players proudly begin their new season of tributes to Hollywood in the form of short audio plays. This week's offering, The Zombie Movie Cliché, Part 1. Uh... Oh no, me and a group of unlikely heroes, including my best friend here, whom I have known since childhood are trapped inside of an unfamiliar surrounding while teeming hordes, overwhelming numbers of the freshly raised undead, shamble towards us in an attempt to eat our flesh. I am armed with this gun, but I have not nearly enough bullets to stop them, and I cannot hit them in the head fast enough to prevent them from eating us. Hurry, best friend, whom I have known since childhood, and get that security door open. I am working as quickly as I can, best friend in the world, and I will use my technical skill to pry open this secure door that is heavily armored, and it will grant us all safe passage. Surely this plan will not fail. Ah, oh, the zombies are getting closer. I, I cannot shoot them fast enough, and they are almost here. Oh, the knuckle-biting tension. Have you you got that door open yet? Uh, not yet. I am still working to... Oh, finally, I have gotten the door open. Here, let me slide it aside and... Oh, no. In a twist of dramatic tension and irony, the door that was to lead to all of our safety is, in fact, also teeming with hordes of the undead, and they have grabbed me. I am being dragged to my death as they bite me and tear me apart. Aye. Oh no, you are my best friend in the whole world, and now you are being dragged away by zombies. Ah, and my... 
cohorts in this movie are dragging me away even though I am screaming to help you from your certain doom. Ah, uh, ah, uh, I am sad and swear vengeance. Ah. Uh. Later, same movie, myself and the fellow survivors of the film are fleeing the building that is filled with the hordes of the undead to get away from an explosion or or overwhelming numbers that are closing in or perhaps to escape before the giant door at the building seals us all in for good or some other less likely scenario we have found ourselves in. And we must hurry. They are all ahead of me. And I hope, certainly hope that nothing strange or emotional will block my path, pathway. I <gasps> gasp. It is my best friend from earlier whom I thought was doomed. He is standing in front of me, staring blankly with large chunks of flesh ripped from his body. Perhaps I am thrown off guard and think just for a second that he may have survived his encounter, even though he was attacked by over 50 zombies. Uh, I stare blankly and, oh, I am a zombie too. I lunge forward to attack and kill my former best friend in the whole world. Oh, the shock and terror. I must choose between killing what was my best friend in the world with a well-placed bullet to the head or let my emotional distress be my undoing and be dragged down and killed and or infected by the zombie plague oh the dilemma oh the tragic humanity uh, uh, hey before i uh, go through this and shoot you can i ask you one question uh sure go ahead why Weren't you attacked by like fifty zombies and dragged into a, a to a hallway? Yes. So why didn't they just eat every square inch of your body and leave a skeleton like they did with everybody else? Because that scenario would not be laden with such emotional irony. Oh, I see. Uh, oh, the yeah. humanity. Oh. Uh, oh. Oh. You have been listening to the Technical Difficulty Playhouse and the Technical Difficulty Players in their presentation of Zombie Movie Clichés Part 1. Join us again next week where we'll present you with more of Hollywood's finest clichés in radio drama format. Thank you. We take you now to a dorm room on a major American campus where a heated discussion is going on. Nah, you're, you're no, 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 really okay. no, no, way. no, no way. way. Yeah, no, come no, on. Listen to me. You listen to me. Okay? No, no. Yeah. That band but, was. So, they were the uh, gayest band. Oh, yeah. come on. So they gay? were, no, they were. Oh, they, they were I worse. Along with fag that. all over I'll everything. They were the faggier. Fag. Gayest band of them all. They were faggier bands than that. I'm not. No, you're wrong. They were. Yeah, they were. My choice. They were much faggier bands. They were so gay. They were bigger fags. They were the gayer band. What? Now, all of you boys, just hold it right there. <gasps> Lilac Avenger. Lilac Avenger, mysterious costumed screaming queen who stands for truth, justice, tolerance, and pure fabulousness, voted the superhero It Boy. You bet your damn butt it's me, and you boys ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Aw, oh, dude, my window. Yeah. What? Oh, forget the window, and those drapes are awful. Do you boys oh, have any idea off. how hurtful your words are? Yeah, what, huh? what do you mean? What are you, what? What are you talking about? <sighs> have you any idea how long the gay community has worked oh, for acceptance oh, in our society? Uh, and there you are just hurling out words like yeah. gay this and fag that well, to describe bands you don't like. Uh, it's just so just... typical of people like you. Those words have an impact. They well, hurt like... people, you know. People who have... Fought uh, for years yeah, and years for acceptance among uh, their peers to, to and their workplace, uh, among their family, uh, and there wait, you go, just uh, throwing it out like it's nothing. Yeah, but but uh, no buts from you, all right? Uh, you should be absolutely uh, humiliated at yourself for your horrible, inflammatory speech. Uh, now look, I don't mean to just bust in here and be the bad guy, okay? I mean uh, I'm a superhero uh, after all. Okay? And you guys are college students. You're smart. You're yeah, well-read. Yeah. Look, if we put our heads together, I'm sure we can come up with perfectly disparaging, bitchy comments about people uh, we don't like without resorting to uh, any hurtful language, okay? Uh, now, who's this band of yours you keep saying is so gay? Oh, uh, it was Bronsky Beat. Okay, Bronsky Beat. Now, we... Bronsky Beat? Y- yeah, we, we were trying I, to figure out which of the bands from the 80s, uh, which of the pop bands was, was the most gay-friendly, whether it was uh, the Pet Shop Boys... Frankie Goes to Hollywood or the uh, Bronsky Beat slash Communards. What? Yeah, you see, we were trying to figure out which one of the bands uh, would be most appropriate to play their hit single at next month's Pride celebration for the dorm. Well, I'm, uh, I'm going to go out the way I came in and uh, just pretend this didn't happen. And my insurance company will cover the window. 
Join us next week as Lilac Avenger takes on his greatest challenge to date. You know, in spite of what you may have heard, there actually is such a thing as too much basil in pesto, okay? And now, back to Cop Beat. still raining like Noah's flood in Los Angeles. It had been eight months since the investigation had started. And except for a job as a Walmart greeter, it was the longest eight months of my life. I still didn't have any answers. I still didn't have any clear evidence. But I still had lots and lots of bodies. Piling up everywhere. A morgue full. Just connected to one simple case started with a high school girl's murder, and then the escalation began. Judges, police officers, high society, politicians, all the way up to where we are now, all of them dead. Now, some people do call me trigger happy, I understand that, I probably could have aimed a little more carefully, I gotta remember to do that in the future, but nevertheless, this case was getting messy. The commissioner had it in for me. He was sure I couldn't crack the case, and so far he'd been right. I needed a break. A nice long vacation once this was over. I'd had something like a vacation when I spent a weekend in the hospital, while I was on my way to visit a Baruka Azaria for a little conversation concerning the murders. Baruka Azaria. Heiress. Neurosurgeon. High society girl. And world famous slash fiction author. She'd gotten her start in Star Trek Kirk Spock action, but had moved on to more interesting combinations. Her latest international sensation was hot and heavy Legolas Spock action. It even gave me an erection, and I don't even like Star Trek. So, anyway, I was pulling up to her mansion that morning to finally get some answers if I could. Ah, Detective Melman. Welcome to my humble home. I hope you're well after your injury. No thanks to one of your boys. Oh, oh, Detective, I am shocked. Your little run-in with my gardener was purely an accident, I assure you. An accident, huh? Just as I was on my way over to question you. I doubt that very much. Detective, you were coming up my driveway in the middle of the night with your lights turned off. What did you expect? A little common road courtesy, I guess. Detective, what exactly brings you into my life? I think we both know the answer to that. All right, all right. How many copies of the Kirk Spock anthology would you like me to sign? Wrong answer, Ms. Azaria. But as long as you asked, you could sign the two copies I brought with me. All right. Could, could you make them out to Melly? Yes, certainly thank, thank to you. Melly. Anyway, there. back to the murders. If we must. I think we both know why we're here. Do we? The pattern fits. Does it points it? directly at you, this area. I don't make me laugh, detective. How could the pattern point at me? How many murders have you written about in your admittedly hot gay fan fiction, Mrs. Area? Uh, to date, uh, exactly none. Precisely. Keep something like that battled up for long enough, it's got to come out somewhere, doesn't it, Mrs. Area? <sighs> Detective, in three hours I have to be in neurosurgery, removing a brain tumor from an 85-year-old world banker. And then after that I have a very long evening ahead of me trying to rectify a short story involving an orgy between the cast of Firefly and Blake Seven. So if you have any proper questions for me, could you please ask them and let me get on with my life? Thank you. I'm done here, Mrs. Area. I have no more questions for you. But just remember, I'll be watching you closely. And I'll be reading every word you write. I understand, detective. So, uh, when is that uh, Blake 7 Firefly story coming out? Stonewall again. I was beginning to think that Sam Spade and Sherlock Holmes combined couldn't figure this one out. I really, really needed some sort of break, something that would bring it all together. Something to explain it finally. Then I got a call from the commissioner. He wanted me down at the station. It was a man I'd never heard of. He may have had some information for me. 
Commissioner. Oh, Melman, finally good of you to come hey. here. Listen, I have a man here by the name of Woody Greennickers. Hi. I believe he can help you with your investigation. Mr. Greennickers, uh-huh. would you mind telling Detective Melman what you told me? Okay, I, it, it was me, I did it. Did what? The, the murders, the girl, the high school girl, and, and, and her father, and the cops, and the judges, and all the politicians, and everybody, it was me, I did it. I, I, me. I find that a little bit hard to believe. No, no, it's true. Look, look, here's here's some photographs that I made of, of me committing the murders, okay? And and here's the DVD of the video right there that I shot of me committing the murders. And, and here's the, the banner ad that I put in the newspaper advertising my website that showed how I did all the murders. And here's my 450-page manifesto with my confession in it that I, that I had published. That that's right there, and then and then here's the 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 cafe press T-shirts with the pictures of the murders in my face, and I did it on it. It it was me, really. I mean, I sent you all those letters with the parts of the bodies in it, telling you that I did it with my address and phone number, but you never called. Is this true, Melman? Don't be ridiculous. Even I couldn't make a simple journeyman rookie mistake like that, unless. Were you sending that stuff to my P.O. box? I. Uh, yeah, that's where I sent all the stuff. Oh, uh, I get it. Uh, uh, I, I stopped using that P.O. box last year. I, I was just too too pricey. Oh, I, I haven't used it in a long time. Oh, oh, oh wow. no wonder. Oh, boy. Oh, no. <laughs> oh that's funny. Oh, yeah. Wow. wow. To think all those people wouldn't have died if I had just sent it to the right address. Yeah, well, it was an honest mistake, Melman. No fault there. All right, well, <laughs> go ahead and arrest him. <laughs> boy, this will be one oh. for the books. Yeah, we're going to yeah, get wow. a really good laugh out of the whole department over this one, boy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Green Knickers, I arrest you for the murder of 62 innocent people. Okay, cool. Well, that's all she wrote. My long, dark night of the soul was finally over. In the future, when I take on a case, I'll make sure to check out my P.O. box a little more carefully and to follow up on the clues, but I'm hoping I never get a case like this again. I got my vacation. It's coming up in two weeks. I'm heading off to Barbados with a big old stack of hot Vulcan on Elf action to read through. Hope to see you next time on The Cop Beat. You've been listening to Cop Beat. Stories culled from the Los Angeles Police Department's true files and then embellished beyond any recognition of possible logical comprehension. Please join us again next week on Cop Beat. Boy, NoseWaterTokyo.com. <laughs> just can't say it enough. NoseWaterTokyo.com is my quote-unquote sponsor. They're just good friends. they got a great site. So go there and spend some money. Uh, you'll like it. they got some really, really cool gifts that we... They, you'll love it. Anyway, that was this week's episode of uh, Technical Difficulties. I actually have a sketch in reserve. I have to because I have a... I have a barbecue I'm going to on Monday. And so that cuts into my my time here on the uh, on the old podcast so thought I'd reserve a few minutes just for the next show anyway uh, thanks once again check out the show notes for some links to some cool at techdiff.com my domain name uh, for some uh, some cool things the Minnesota Podcasters uh, Association uh, Minnesota Podcasters Group uh, I'm a member of them now thanks a lot to them for letting me join what for me being from Minnesota and well living in Minnesota and podcasting and uh, next week, I'm going to be interviewed about uh, my, about technical difficulties on the First Crack podcast, um, and I'll let you know more about that as it as it comes next week. I'll, I'll let you know about about when and where you can hear that, and that will be. I'm sure it'll be really amusing to hear me mindlessly twaddle on. But in any event, um, thanks so much for listening, and uh, drop me a line, please, at uh, techdiff at tcinternet.net. Or uh, give me a vote at Podcast Alley if you haven't already for the month of May. I'd like to get up the high numbers, please. Just boost my ego, why don't you? And uh, and like that. So uh, Oh, and i got a very special feature for next week's show as well. Oh, I think you're going to enjoy that. Oh, God, you're going to enjoy what I've got lined up for you next week. And uh, anyway, take care. Thanks again for listening. And uh, see you next week. Thank you. 
thank you for listening to Friday Follies right here on the Mutual Audio Network. Please consider subscribing to other days of the Mutual Feeds, including Monday Matinee for classic, live, and theatrical audio plays. Tuesday Terrors for horror audio drama. Wednesday Wonders, our science fiction and fantasy magazine. Thursday Thrillers for action, adventure, mystery, and crime drama. Saturday Story Circle for kids and families alike. And Sunday Showcase, bringing you the very newest in audio releases for the week from our United Artists of Audio, right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The Mutual Audio Drama Network, where we listen and imagine together.